Hello and welcome to welcome back to the live launch of SolidWorks 2019. If you're just joining us for the first time today, this morning we spent about 40 minutes talking about some of the great new enhancements you're going to find in SolidWorks 2019. They included things related to performance, modeling details, smart manufacturing, design to manufacturing, and some really innovative stuff we're doing with the user interface in SolidWorks. Uh, to learn more about all these great features we're showing, I encourage you to go check out our website and look for the What's New section. There you'll be able to find lots of videos showing all these great new capabilities. Also, if you'd like to learn more in-depth information about what's coming in the next release, I encourage you to sign up and attend a live reseller event. Now, this morning we talked a little bit about Mesh, but I wanted to continue this conversation, so I've brought a few other folks on to join us. Kurt from Product Introduction and Marlon from Product Definition. Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks. This morning we talked a little bit about using Mesh geometry uh, and different ways we could create it and use it. Um, Marlon, you mentioned some of those. What were some of those features we discussed earlier today for those who are just joining us? Yeah, so today we uh, had a chance to look at uh, 3D textures and also slicing, where you can um, slice a mesh model and uh, produce these sections to recreate the mesh model using classic SOLIDWORKS geometry. Now, these were really good features that allow us to leverage and take advantage of mesh geometry that are given to us. But you've also been instrumental in introducing some features that allow us to really directly work with mesh geometry, correct? Mm -hmm. Starting in SOLIDWORKS uh, 2018, we really made a big push into working uh, with mesh geometry. We introduced an entirely new body type called uh, the mesh B-Rep uh, body type. And what that is, is that's in between um, uh, mesh geometry, or what we call a graphics body, where it's just the facets, and that commonly comes in from an STL file. Um, it's in between that and what I'd call classic BREP geometry. And I say classic, um, you know, because that's what we traditionally think of as SOLIDWORKS geometry. But certainly, in, you know, in my mind, SOLIDWORKS geometry is the most advanced level of, of geometry. Um, but between those two, we now have mesh BREP, where you can take a mesh file, convert it to mesh BREP, perform geometric operations, and manipulate the model um, to get uh, you know, the, the resultant model that you want to manufacture. Yeah, and that'll help me add those features that we might necessarily need to make yep. it a manufacturable component, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Kurt, you've shared with me several really interesting things we've, we've introduced in SOLIDWORKS that allow us to actually create this mesh geometry. Uh, Marlon, you've been involved in kind of working on these projects as well. Kurt, what, what are some of the stuff you've actually seen that we can do a simulation to generate this? Sure, Jeremy. So, um, yeah, with SOLIDWORKS 2018, we introduced topology study. So you could take uh, your standard setup, you know, loads and boundary conditions, and have SOLIDWORKS directly give you, you know, final results. So look for ways to lightweight your part, but still meeting the, the, the stiffness constraints uh, at the same time. And 2019, we just extended to that. Um, one of the most important things, I think, um, you know, from my experience as an engineer, is, is this example, reducing frequency or, or eliminating natural frequencies, in this case, below a certain range, because you don't want resonance. You know, a lot of, a lot of high-performing optical and electronic equipment, you just have to eliminate that. SOLIDWORKS 2019 and topology study, you can, you can throw that constraint in and, and and it solves for you automatically. In addition to that, we also added um, a strength, or I'm sorry, a stress or a factor of safety constraint. So you have those two options available to you as well, um, you know, to give you the, the most ideal geometry to meet your real world constraints. That's great. So what happens from here? So we've entered, we've put some of the we've entered some of this criteria, and what happens next here? Sure, Jeremy. So when it's all said and done, we end up getting a a, a mesh like uh, like Marlin said before, but we can literally directly take that mesh now and export this out to a mesh B rep and use it directly in SolidWorks. We can add more mesh geometry to it. We can add you know a, a fair number of standard features if you wanted you know add more to it. Um, and and it's right there. And bring it back into your model. You can see how it's going to work. You can directly 3D print it. You can actually add more geometry to it for machinable features later if you want to do that. We have just a lot of options to make it really smooth and seamless 
to go right from topology study to, you know, to ready to manufacture. So if I understand this, what we're really doing is we're basically setting up the load criteria, the frequency criteria, the factor of safety of a part we know we need to make, and then we're letting simulation say, look, this is what you really need to make this work. Mm -hmm. And then we can, Marlon, you have a lot of experience with this. We can now take this and we can turn this mesh geometry into something we could manufacture both traditionally and with newer technologies. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. To, to expand on what you were saying, what topology optimization for me really... What captures my imagination is I look back when I was a design engineer, you know, very junior, didn't have the same experience as the more senior engineers I was working with. And, you know, topology optimization would have allowed me to say, well, I know the loads and restraints, um, and I know the volume that I can, you know, use to fill in this bracket or, or whatever component, and ask topology optimization to give me a shape that meets my uh, loading and rest um, uh, constraint criteria and gives me the geometry um, that would, would meet that criteria, um, and I wouldn't have to rely on, on the experience that I didn't have. And what you can do once you have um, this essentially, as Kurt was saying, mesh file out of topology optimization, you can directly print it to a 3D printer. You can take it, send it right to a 3D printer, because you know, as we all know, 3D printers read in uh, mesh files. The most common format is STL. But uh, 3MF, as, as we mentioned, is becoming uh, a lot more uh, prominent, and certainly SolidWorks and uh, many uh, additive manufacturing uh, equipment uh, companies sit on the consortium developing that format. So you can directly print it um, as a mesh file. You can convert it to mesh BREP, and then use that as, um, you can use the new mesh BREP functionality to add any uh, other features that you may want, you know, perhaps there's uh, an aesthetic consideration. You know, you need smoother uh, geometry or holes in a, a certain place. You know, to um, to give it the look that you're going for. Um, and then you you could also take that mesh file and use it as a reference to recreate, you know, a solid uh, SolidWorks model from uh, that file. You can actually reference the mesh, drop points onto it, and use that as a guide to create your SolidWorks model. Yeah, and we even we saw this morning, for those who didn't get a chance to see it, we could take it and also even just build spline geometry right off of that slicing Absolutely. as well. Yeah, yeah. So this is some really cool stuff. Is there anything here that I'm missing uh, I don't, that we haven't covered with us? No, this is it. Well, awesome. Kurt and Marlon, I want to thank you both for being here today to mm -hmm. explore a little bit about what we're doing with mesh geometry. We're really moving forward with treating this as like a regular geometry inside of SolidWorks. For those of you who, uh, who are just joining us, we're going to be broadcasting throughout the day for the rest of the afternoon. In about an hour at 2 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to be talking about extended reality with SolidWorks. And then finally at 3 o'clock Eastern time, we're going to show how to connect the disconnected with some really unique SolidWorks technology. And again, check out the SolidWorks website and find some of those What's New videos to explore more what we're releasing in SolidWorks 2019.